Dear students, let us start the discussion on today's newspaper that is 6th March 2017. The first article is No Time for Complacency. Here we will be discussing about the economic scenario of India in the context of recent economic survey released by OECD and IMF's assessment paper regarding India. First is, the central statistical organization has given very positive growth prospects for India's GDP in spite of demonetization. All the macroeconomic fundamentals such as inflation, fiscal deficit, current account deficit also are under control. But what is worrisome to India is decrease in global exports, increase in commodity prices, especially the oil prices, and finally slowing down of global especially the Chinese economy and increase in interest rates. And the second worrisome in, for India is public debt. Now the ideal thing it is, is it shall be around 60%. India aims to achieve this by 2023. So the interest servicing for India is the highest if compared across the emerging economies. So, India has to shift away its expenditure towards more productive capital expenditure and decrease the revenue expenditure. And over a period of time, it has to bring down its public debt. The third is the health of the banking and finance sector. The banks in India suffers from twin balance sheet syndrome. Both the corporates which are being financed by the banks are suffering from the weak balance sheets. The reason is most of the money of the banks taken as loans by these companies is invested in long-term infrastructure projects and these projects did not move forward as expected due to policy issues and lack of environmental clearances. Finally, it has impacted the health of the banks. The non-performance assets of the banks have increased. So what has been suggested is let us create a bad bank. That is, Asset Reconstruction Bank in the public sector, that is what is the economic service suggested. But it cannot be alone the solution. Changing the way the banking sector performs and bringing in institutional autonomy to the banking sector and fixing the accountability is very critical. So the government shall not behave as the owner of the banks. It shall behave as investor in the banks. And after this, what are the ways forward? Rule-based management. Especially in the finance sector, we have seen many changes. Monetary Policy Committee, Bank Board Bureau, GST Council. All these are institutional solutions to the problems of the finance sector. And next is, local governments play a critical role in giving clearances and also to acquire the land. But local governments are not performing well and they do not have financial independence. This article also recommends for financial decentralization. If you take 13th Finance Commission, it has divided the finances to the local bodies into two types. One is performance based, the other one is basic. So, similarly, incentives need to be provided by the 15th Finance Commission for the devolution of the taxes and other financial powers to the local governments by the states. So this is what the article recommends for. Let's get back into the saving the guards. It is about western guards. Western guards are the global biodiversity hotspots. And next is, this article we need to see from a debate perspective. That is, conservatism versus development or environmental protection versus development. That is what is the argument we can see it through. But understand, this argument shall always be supported and argued based on the scientific facts. In India, the major problem is, we do not have a framework for a scientific argument of this particular debate. So you all know that biodiversity has an economic value intrinsically to it. But however, how this economic value has to be assessed and what are the long-term advantages of the same need to be scientifically proved, scientifically assessed to counter the argument of development. And here we need to understand that development does not mean environmental exploitation. 
If you see the chain, it has exploited the environment for in the name of the development and growth. But today it is talking about green GDP, green economy. So the long-term costs of the environmental destruction need to be assessed. Then only this argument can be better settled. And environmental friendly economic activity such as um, agro production based on ecology and the concepts such as ecofeminism, responsible tourism, all these have come into existence. If you talk to Western Guard specifically, it influences the monsoons and it has got rich biodiversity which has not been explored by India till date. Only 6% of the biodiversity we have documented in these areas. And they have huge medicinal value. And they provide for a human value at the same time. So Madhav Gadgil committee has clearly stated that entire western guards need to be declared as ecologically sensitive zone. And similarly, Kasturi Rangan committee has decreased the size. But however, it also stated that it has to be declared as eco-sensitive zone. But the area has come down to one third. But government did, is not moving forward on the issue. It is again again re-notifying the demarcation of eco-sensitive zone. So this is worrisome. The GDP growth numbers in a hurry for this, we shall not take the future for granted and it lies in our environmental protection. Coming to elusive reconciliation, it is about Sri Lanka. So the UN report on Sri Lanka expresses the concern on the ongoing excessive use of force, injustice towards the Tamilians. Now, the Rajapaksa government, it was, it has waged a war against LTTE and many war crimes have committed against the Tamilians. And much of the land that is belonging to the Tamilians was occupied by the Sri Lankan military. Now later, the present government, Sirisena government, it is a national unity government where the opposition parties have come together to bring in reconciliation. They also have provided hope for justice and bringing in accountability for the war crimes. But however the politics, the politics are setting in and revival of Rajapaksa and may get uh, 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 hastened or can move forward with uh, rising the sentiments of Sinhalese. So in this context, the divides are going to appear again. So we have to state this way. If the reconciliation did not move forward and injusti injustices continue and redrafted constitution based on federal values do not set in and the Sri Lankan future is going to be bleak. Now, coming to indiscriminate discrimination. Now let me say that how happiness is infectious Similarly, hatred is also infectious. Now, my friend used to tell me this. A casteism, a sense of caste, it is like a mercury droplet. You don't know what the direction it takes. So it's a slippery slope. So if you don't hesitate to it in the very first instance, then obviously the consequences of this, the direction it is going to take, we can never see that. If you take the history of America, to evolve it as melting pot of the immigrants, it took uh, many decades. Now, before that, in the early 20th century and uh, 21st, late 20th century and uh, early 21st century, the entire American history is about discrimination towards the immigrants. And immigration was always an electoral debate. But 1965 onward, slowly, America opened up itself for its development through immigrants. And after globalization, again, the protectionism is entering into America and Donald Trump reflects this. And here, the hate crimes are also growing against as the people from other countries. So, the racial history of America is truly divided. So, the prejudice is a disease and it is contagious. It needs to be stopped at its uh, beginning. So, it has to be quarantined. That will be my answer to this article is. Now, let's come to policy drags e-commerce exports. 
Now, understand e-commerce exports means, let's take the e-commerce website in India shall be able to export the goods to an American citizen as a commercial shipment. So what comes over here? So the regulatory framework and then logistics, especially the courier and postal department. So with regard to the regulatory framework, the government has provided for certain benefits under Merchandise Export Scheme of India. Merchandise Export Scheme of India. In this only 25,000 rupees, they will get the duty drawback. It means that whatever the duty which has been imposed, it can be used to import the goods at a later date. Over and above the 25,000 rupees, it will not apply. So the limit is very less. If you take the total value of these e-exports through e-commerce channels is expected to be 20 plus trillion dollars. And already countries such as UK has made a policy towards this to actively uh, recommend, encourage them. But in India, limitations such as this 25,000 are not uh, benefiting the exporters. And coming to the logistics, uh, there is no category called commercial shipments. Only certain post offices are encouraged, are allowed to take these uh, shipments. And no category of commercial shipments exists even today. Without that, when the good is returned, how it has to be categorized, how to take the taxes paid back is a major question. And second, if it is not recognized as a commercial shipment, then how one has to claim is a VAT input, service tax input is a major question over here. So these logistical policy and other bureaucratic issues need to be addressed to improve the e-commerce exports in India. Law enforcement in the digital era. You know that the cyber crimes are increasing and the law enforcement agencies are not geared up to this. We have emergency response teams, cyber emergency response teams. But however, the search capacities are also very limited. Now, how the different countries reacted to the cyber crime? So, if you take the United States of America, they brought in a National Cyber Forensic Training Alliance with uh, private partners. It means public-private partnership is uh, tried in, in handling the cyber crimes. NASCOM is also establishing cyber cells and cyber labs in India. So, it is talking about Data Security Council of India, which needs active support from the government. And the cyber threats, they are cross-border. That's why there shall not be jurisdictional limits across the states for the agency which has been so created. So we have to create a pan-India agency which also can be able to communicate with the similar organizations across the countries to bring in a strong cyber regulation and protection. That's what the article talks about. Now coming to the world page. In this, G's, uh, Xi Jinping's core leader status is affirmed. I'm not interested about this core leadership already which we have discussed. What the National Committee is going to discuss, the Central Committee is going to discuss in China. How to bring back the growth back to China is the first issue. How to reiterate the One China policy and counter Taiwan and Hong Kong independence movements. And finally, we are, they are going to discuss about um, the changing global paradigm and um, the pollution in China and how the China shall shift itself towards the green economy. So these are the questions which the Central Committee is going to take up. These are the concerns of China. So these are the issues for decision. And the notes is here for you. And these notes will be available to you on liax.in slash civilsprep. That is one thing. And I have start, I'm working on the DAF from tomorrow. From tomorrow I will be available in New Delhi for a week. I can meet the people after 7.30. I will finish my classes by 7.30. I can meet you between 7.30 to 7.45 at teacher's room in Wajiram. Thank you very much and all the best.